Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, we're going to be making sodium citrate. So sodium citrate is an emulsifier and was actually first discovered by Kraft. And the reason they wanted it, they wanted a consistent cheese that they could add just about any uh, cheese byproduct to, to make uh, melty cheese. So sodium citrate is basically a, uh, a salt of citric acid, and it's very simple to make. You can make it using bicarbonate of soda or sodium bicarbonate and citric acid, and of course some water to start a chemical reaction. The result instead of that chemical reaction is indeed sodium citrate, and uh, it's very simple to make at home. Now, the reason we use sodium citrate in cheese, or uh, American cheese, Velveeta, uh, cheese slices, that sort of stuff, all those sorts of processed cheeses, is because it reduces the cheese's acidity, and it makes the proteins in the cheese uh, more soluble and prevents it from separating into the milk solids and the fats that are in the cheese. If you melt, sometimes melt normal cheese, you'll see that you'll get an oily slick um, over the top of the cheese. Well, sodium citrate prevents that and it holds the cheese together. It's great for making cheese sauces, for pouring over nachos and for making your own style of American cheese. Now, if you want to see how to make American cheese, you can check out a separate video that I've got over here. Anyway, let's get on and see how we make sodium citrate. Now the first ingredient we're making, we're using or measuring out is just water. I'm using pure water, 125 grams. Next ingredient I'm measuring out there is sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda. So we're going to be measuring out 97 grams of bicarb. I'm so close. So these measurements are going to be fairly exact. Uh, and it's not, that's the reason I'm not doing them in pounds and ounces. Ounces is because I don't know how to convert them like that. Anyway, so the next ingredient is citric acid, and we need 74 grams of citric acid. So this is anhydrous citric acid, so it dissolves in water. Uh, most of the citric acids you get in the store. Uh, anhydrous. So there we go. So the ingredients have to be exactly measured out for the chemical reaction to work properly. So we put our citric acid into the uh, into a saucepan. This is a two litre saucepan. We add in our water, 125 millilitres, or 125 grams, which is exactly the same. And we give that a good stir to make sure that the citric acid is fully dissolved in, that, in the water, so you can't see any of the crystals uh, remaining behind. So, that didn't take very long at all. And now we're going to pour in the bicarb soda or sodium bicarbonate. Now, technically, what we're making... Oh, look at that fizz. <laughs> there is a big reaction there. I had to keep stirring very fast to stop it from uh, going over the, the side of the pan. So just keep stirring after you put that in. As you can see there, it's uh, lessened a little bit. The reaction does take quite some time. Now, technically, we're making trisodium citrate. Uh, that's the proper technical uh, chemical term for what we're trying to make. 
there we go now it has settled down a fair bit you can see there that it's still bubbling it's still releasing carbon dioxide and that's exactly what we want it to do we want the complete reaction of the acid and the base to finish now it starts to go clear that just means some of the bicarb has settled on the bottom so you need to stir it a bit more so that the reaction continues and you get rid of all of that carbon dioxide um, out of the the solution so you can see it goes fairly clear just giving it a final stir there with a spatula just to make sure there's no powders on the bottom and I've done that there so that's as clear as it's going to get there's no more CO2 being released it stopped fizzing and I've just about to turn the heat on where I have there so once all the CO2 bubbles are finished you turn the heat on just to a simmer and we're just going to boil the water off so the remaining powder uh, or crystals that are left behind is the trisodium citrate or sodium citrate as you can see there it gets a bit of a crust just give it a bit of a swirl now it took me about two hours to make this the biggest part of the reaction was when we added the bicarb and the citric acid together that's what took the longest this boiling off part took about 30 minutes tops um, so th this was the fairly easy part so I'm just stirring it just to make sure that uh, it crystallizes properly which it does fairly fast once most of the water's gone you can see it starts to form a paste uh, and that paste is the uh, the sodium citrate so I'm just spreading that over the bottom of the pan it's on a very low heat at the moment just to make that dry out and it does and then and when I got to this stage I just spread it out on the bottom and turned the heat off gave it a quick taste it tasted just slightly salty sour and then after a little bit more time it uh, it turned into a, a powder that was uh, had no water in it whatsoever so I just poured it into a little container and there's my sodium citrate easy peasy so how much sodium citrate do you use when making melty cheese well it's fairly simple you use between two and three percent of the total liquid of the water that you add uh, plus the weight of the cheese so for about 400 grams of cheese and a 125 milliliters of water you would add about 15 grams of sodium citrate and this makes a very nice cheese sauce which you can melt straight and pour straight over nachos or you can form it in molds and make a solid block of say an american style cheese i'll actually put a chart in the description below to show how much cheese to add, how much liquid to add, and how much sodium citrate to add to make the right consistency, all the way from firm molding cheese, cheese slices, a liquid cheese sauce, and uh, a really runny cheese sauce. So check that in the description below. Well, I hope you like this video. It's a little bit different than the normal cheese making videos that I make, and it is, I think it stands on its own two feet. A little bit of a chemistry lesson. However, uh, those who want to make their own sodium citrate at home, and they've got some simple products like citric acid and sodium bicarbonate, which are easy to buy in the supermarket, unlike sodium citrate, mind you, then you'll be able to make it at home yourself. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time.